I think the first step uh, when I was getting sober and I was going to Narcotics Anonymous and Alcoholics Anonymous and I was going through the 12-step rooms, um, I had an opportunity to meet Dr. Patch Adams. My dad had done some amazing things with a hospital that he was the, the CEO at. And Patch Adams was brought in as a speaker. And if you have if you know the movie Patch Adams with Robin Williams, you're already seeing a beautiful representation of a, of a real man who has what Dr. Patch Adams, the real Dr. Patch Adams has accomplished in life and accomplished with healthcare is that movie is but a shadow of this man's brilliance and light. And the movie itself was inspiring and brilliant because of the story and because of Robin Williams. I watched Dr. Patch Adams speak and I was so moved by the, the, the exercise that he gave us and the sheer will to do things differently, to be himself at all costs, despite the healthcare industry and the traditions and the norm and the towing the line and, and just watching this man was such a moving experience. Afterwards, I just wanted to, I wanted to get his autograph, of course, and everybody lined up to get his autograph, but I wanted to give him something of mine. And it just so happens that in the car, I had a manual for a children's camp that I was helping run. I had, I had the manual and I just wanted to give him something of me because he had given so much of himself. And I waited in line and waited in line. And I was just like, what am I, how will I stand out? All these people are saying, thank you. How would I? And I didn't know. And so I just, okay. I, I guess I'll just meet him. And I was next. Like the, the, the woman left and he looked at me and I jumped in his lap and I grabbed him by the face and I kissed him on the lips because I was just so moved. And he was the second man I had ever kissed on the lips. The first always being my dad who raised me because I loved him. He loved me and he was affectionate. And I kissed Patch at Dr. Patch Adams on the lips and he kissed me right back with no hesitation. And it was pure love and acceptance. Um, he called me the next day and asked me to come teach at the Gesundheit clinic when he finally had it built. But that wasn't the point. The point was that afterwards I went up and I told my mom what I did. And she just looked at me and she goes, you are so audacious. And that word became my word because that's all I have. I'm not a smart man. I'm not a handsome man. I'm not a, I'm, maybe I'm not a man. Fung. I don't know. That's not the point. The <laughs> point is, <laughs> the point is I've had one thing that's guided me to success mentally, physically, emotionally, spiritually, financially. And that's the audacity to what to conceive of something, to believe in something, to achieve something and to receive something conceive, believe, achieve, receive. That's it. And if, if life isn't working the way you want it to, it's one of those four things. Can you actually conceive of what you want? Do you believe that you deserve it? Will you get out there and achieve it? And when it shows up, cause it will, will you receive it? And anytime I struggle, it's one of those not conceiving of the truth or what is, but all I have at the end of it, if you boil it all away, the clever words, the, the, whatever talent I have as a martial artist or a writer, whatever gift I bring to children and families who are really, really struggling or business people who are stuck somewhere, whatever presentation skills I have on stage or in commercials and movies or whatever is just the audacity to do it anyway, to try to to be audacious. That's it. That's the one thing I've embraced. And it's gotten me success after success after success. It's gotten me a marriage. I adore children who they are the light. Now a grandchild and work that I love to do. I'm just audacious enough to believe, conceive, achieve, and receive because somewhere in this tiny little brain in my head, I deserve it. I think that. I think I deserve this.
I don't know why. I don't know how. But give me. I'm going to go get it. Get some. Okay, so the word is chalkboard. So if you had to use chalkboard as a metaphor for success, what would that be? How is success like a chalkboard? Mm. Grandmaster uh, Hatsumi, who I had the pleasure of meeting and learning from in Nidpo Taijutsu. He was watching a karate student at a big demonstration break bricks, grab another brick, break it, grab another brick, break it, grab another brick, break it. Now, Hatsumi um, is the grandmaster of ninjutsu, ninpo taijutsu, the ninjas, 34th in Tokakuri ninjutsu. And he kept laughing at this guy breaking all these bricks. And the guy was infuriated. But Hatsumi is one of the greatest martial artists out there. Afterwards, he walks up after he bows, he walks up to Hatsumi at the event and says, why were you laughing at me? And Hatsumi says, because you doubled the amount of weapons that I have access to. So when your chalk breaks, use both hands. Nicely done. So that's how success is like a chalkboard.